It's uh, Sunday, the 2nd of October 2022. In this evening's show, we are chirping on about yesterday's narrow home defeat to Norwich as the high flying and free dive in Canaries edged the win at Bloomfield Road. I'm Josh Aspinall, this is Seasiders Podcast. Match reaction show Blackpool nil, Norwich City 1. Good evening, everybody out there. Welcome back to the Seasiders podcast. Um, welcome, everyone, if you listen on the audio pod. Andy Porter's in there straight away in the comments. Evening, everybody. It's been a long time. Hope you are well. Peter Griffiths has just said Sunday ain't the same without you guys. David Coleman, glad you are back. But we have got a, uh, a very special guest on uh, this evening's show. Long overdue, Mr. David Regazzino, otherwise known as Raggy, is joining us uh, Pleasure to have you on, Raggy. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for the invite. No worries. Excellent. Um, Tim's with us. Uh, evening, Tim. Evening. I, 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 I need you to support that tumbleweed um, uh, sound effect on after your chirping little joke. <laughs> Dear me. Uh, free, di- free diving as well. As one. <laughs> oh, jeez. Honestly, <clears throat> we, ne- never go. was it more needed. That's the one. <laughs> Nick, are you going to be chirping on about the uh, the game today, given the fact you've had about 10 pints last night? I was uh, party to about three or four of those, so I'm uh, yeah. a bit better better for the wear than you obviously are this evening. It's I've not done much today, I have to admit. It's <laughs> uh, It's been a day in front of the telly. Um, yeah, I don't know. Bit, the older bit, you bit get, the, the, older you bit, get the, the more the hangovers are worse. I do. I'm having a pint of uh, stout about it, vanilla stout. I'll just hold up to the camera. Aldi's finest. Are they selling that kind of stuff in the the new posh bar at the Armfield, Raggy? Or is it more of a... Uh... No, no, proper stuff. I saw he Lager, the only place that sells, the only pub in Blackpool that's selling it. You I might have in, to put... You can I might get it in to... the beach house, but that's not a pub, is it? I'm sure they sell it in the Bloomfield Club, you know, in the front bit. But it's well, £5... Pound... Not that five, I know. five for a pint. Yeah, four fifty in you know, RGT. Oh, there you go. Ten percent off with a membership card as well. Yeah, that's without <laughs> members' prices. Yeah, yeah. Get yourselves down there, folks. I'm looking forward to check out this new um, new bar. Anyway, shall we get on with the uh, the match reaction pod? And the first thing we usually do in this section of the show is bring up the team sheet because. Raggy, we'll start with you because you're the guest. Uh, a, a bit of a curveball there. Chris Maxwell starting in goal. What was your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I'm never worried about the goalkeepers. I, I, I like him and Grimshaw. And um, I, it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever, whichever name I see is fine. I assume they just think uh, Grimshaw's had a couple of dodgy goal line incidences over the last few weeks. Got away with one and didn't get away with the other. But. Uh, I like Maxwell, so yeah. Oh. Um, my my thoughts on it were I, there was there's Tim. There was quite a bit of a Twitter storm about it. A lot of people mm-hmm. weren't happy with Grimmy being dropped, but I was I was quite on board with it to be honest. A because Grimmy has made a couple of minor errors, but it's not enough to drop him. But B the fact that I think we discussed on on here before that. He brings a lot more to Akpateta's game, taking that responsibility away from him being captain. And also, he's a better captain than Akpateta and the team seems to play better with him in that role. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that, that I immediately noticed when the game started was you could you, you really did hear Maxwell and you forget how much um, uh, how much he has to say during the game and, and, and how vocal he is, um, particularly to his back four. So um, I think that's something that Grimshaw perhaps doesn't doesn't have. Personally, I'm not sure whether I'd have to drop Grimshaw because I don't think the the errors, if if you're going to call them that, are um, really justified. It. I thought, um, you know, he's been superb. I, I think probably, and I, I you know, I, I've been a critic of it. His distribu- 
more than anything else, it's his distribution, I think, that, that that's let him down a little bit. Um, where he's where he's put my uh, where he's put Dukes under pressure, and um, and but not just him, others as well. Where you know where he's he's not adapted to reflect a team playing high up against our back our back four or back five as it was uh, for a few weeks. So yeah, but uh, I, I was sort of with Raggy with it. I think they both do a, you know do a good job. I think Grimshaw's the best shot stopper. Um, better most of the time, better distribution. But Maxwell brings that something extra, doesn't he, with being a leader? Now we'll get your your views and also just the rest of the team, which was uh, it looked like it was back to a four three three with uh, Gabriel Ekpeta, yeah. Thornley, Thompson, Patino, Dougal, Wright, Corbinu, Yates, and Pervade. It was a uh, quite a reasonable team, I thought. Yeah, nice to see it wasn't five at the back. Um, and as far as the goalie, yeah. I won't lie, I was surprised when I saw it was um, Chris Maxwell. But I don't mind because, similar to what Raggy said, you know, they're both good, competent keepers. Um, Grimmy, yeah, he's made a couple of mistakes, but I, w- I was still surprised that he'd uh, that he'd changed it. Um, but like Tim said, you do see straight away just how much more vocal Chris Maxwell is. And we have looked shaky defensively this season. Um, so... That side of it, he, he props just you know organizes a bit more, which I think is what we need because we've been missing it. I think since Keo went, uh, and, the, and and for the rest of the team, uh, it was good to see Callum Wright get a start. Um, we thought played quite well once he uh, once he got going, um, and the rest of it, yeah, I, I I didn't mind it. There was no you know no massive surprises in there for the for the rest of it. Uh- Raggy, if you look at these comments that have just come in, um, first one from David Coleman, if you have two good keepers, have you played interchangeably regularly to keep them sharp? Um, decent. It's a fair comment, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And like I say, for me, they're equally as good because they both bring something a little bit different. But mm. what they both bring is the steady pair of hands, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, all good and fair comment, I think. Yeah. Tim, um, Owen and Taylor just said I was surprised. I was surprised by Maxwell, but in my opinion, he hasn't lo- um, lost a step since his excellent form two years ago. Fantastic performance! I think it's quite, it's quite hard to forget how good he was um, in that promotion season, particularly. Yeah, I think, I think, and I think he, he had a little bit of a dip. He had a little bit of a dip last year, and obviously Grimshaw ended up keeping the shirts after that, didn't he? But you know, yeah, the year before he was he was superb. I mean, going back to David's comments, um, uh, you know, to use the old uh, uh, adage, uh, those of a certain vintage um, will remember when uh, uh, in the in the 70s where they couldn't make a decision between Clements and Chilton. So they literally used to alternate every England game, which was quite bizarre. But I, I do think you need, you know, if you can keep two keepers sharp and fresh and, and, and you know, uh, and, you know, they'll, they'll feed off each other and, you know, we can only be better for it, I would say. But um, obviously, Max, I think it was Maxwell got injured. Was it? Was it Grimshaw came in when he got injured, didn't he? I can't remember how That's it right, happened yeah. now. Yeah. And then he just couldn't get his shirt, couldn't get the shirt back afterwards. But um, yeah, the, the only thing I, I, I did, I, I must admit yesterday when I looked at that team sheet, I didn't realise uh, Husband was injured uh, initially. Um, mm-hmm. So that was a surprise not seeing, not seeing him involved. Also, Williams seems to have, Disappeared, doesn't he? I wonder whether we'll see him again. He's got a knock, hasn't he? I oh, think. is he? Right, okay. Um, yeah. But I just, um, I don't see where where he gets in at all. And I'm, you know, and good to see. You know, we we spoke about it the other week. I mean, Thornley is he's clearly impressed, um, and uh, and and it's good to see him. Which he did. I don't think he got a fair rub of the green with Critchley, did he? So, um, you know, he's he's got his place in the team and. Um, I think most of us are glad to see that he's been given the opportunity. Um, I think having hubby missing was a a big minus yesterday, but yeah, yeah, big. Well, yeah. I think I don't think as we're going to discuss, I don't think Thompson would have stayed on the pitch if he was uh, uh, if hubby had been on the on the bench. Okay, let's move on to the start of the game then. Um, Raggy, we started the game very well. First fifteen twenty minutes, we were. On the front foot, creating chances and yeah, excellent. Uh, surprise, like to say, at least we went back to a four-three-three. Well, that's what it looked like away from that five at the back, and we were the better team by a mile. 
And yeah. um, but that's my only concern. You see, as we as we move on to discuss it, is I fear that we'll be saying the same thing 15, 20 times on the bounce here. That we're playing well, we set off, we're doing all right. When we, where are we going to score? I, I, yeah, it doesn't feel like we're going to score. It's and Nick, we need it's to been... score against teams like Norwich early on. Mm. Get them coming out, but um, yeah, take the first fifteen minutes in isolation. It was excellent. Mm. Nick, it's been a, as Raggy just said, it's a, a common theme throughout the start of this mm. season, hasn't it? Where we've not dominated for fifty, we've been by far the best team for the first 15, 20 minutes, several games, and we're just not sticking these chances away. Not, not that we created anything. No. Uh, Massively clear cut. No, yeah. clear cut. That's, that's it. We're on the front foot, and and then, you know, an awful mistake, and a player like that, he's not going to miss. It was like against Blackburn, wasn't it? You've got teams, they've all got this one player who knows where the back of the net is and, and only needs one chance, whereas for us... You know, we, we need more than that. Um, we kind of got sort of one in four strikers, if you like, but Pookie at this level, he he's absolutely lethal, isn't he? And like, like Raggy says, that it could be a bit of a theme as we, as we go through the season, uh, depending on what happens in, in the January window. Um, just finding someone who can put the chance away. Tim, there was a... Um, we did a... Was it with the post? Was it Corbino, wasn't it? Corbino, um, yeah. Corbino on 17 minutes. Um, I thought Vader was very lively, wasn't it, in the opening stages? Yeah, I, what I liked as well was, I mean, yeah, he, he 100% agree. I was just about to say that. Um, but I liked the way him and, and Wright were linking up. Um, Wright seemed to find him um, with, with regularity in that first 15, 20 minutes. And, um, you know, as, as we spoke about, you know, it was great to see him get a start and um, and show us what, what he could potentially do. And it's great he's actually our player rather than a lone E as well. Um, but yeah, um, I thought Pavida was, was superb. And it was his little dribble just come across that ended up coming across to Corbino, who unfortunately, and, it, you know, in, in those type of situations, he's been superb for us this year. And he just caught, you know, it's caught the, it was sort of like the upright, wasn't it? The, um, the, cro- the, the, um, at the top, the top left-hand corner of the post, rather than uh, rather than the back of the net, and that could that could have put a completely different complexion on it, you know, because I think we had, we we most certainly not just then, but also later in the game had them on the back on the back foot, and they're a great side, you know. So there's a lot of it. Lot despite the disappointment, there's a lot to be positive about, and we but we should have had a goal in that 20 minute period, and that's the long and the short of it because. That's what's going to cost us, and that's what's cost us in previous games, and it's going to keep costing us, unfortunately, unless mm. we address it. Corbin, who do you think he should have gone across the goal on that chance rather than going for the near post? You very rarely score from those tight angles. Uh, it's hard. To, it's hard to be too critical because it, it was. A, it was a. He had a split second, didn't he, to, to decide what he was going to do, and you know six inches the other way and it would have been in the top corner and the keeper was nowhere near it. So the keeper wouldn't have saved it. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure you can criticize him for that, but it's just um, a bit frustrating. Um, but uh, you know, again, you know, talking about, you know, what Raggy said, the dominance we showed in that first segment of the game, because I, I, I think most of us turned up fearing the worst, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Uh, that we we're going to get absolutely um, uh, pulverized. And uh, it was, it was the exact opposite, which was, which was, I- I didn't think Norwich were that good, actually. They were, you know, they were decent, but they weren't the kind of the free-flowing Man City Championship style team that I was expecting. No. I think as the half went on, though, they kind of, you know, once we'd done our bit in the first 15 minutes, they did start to come into it more do, do you think and more. Do you think it knocked the confidence out of us, that goal, um, and particularly coming the way it came via that mistake from Thompson? Yeah, well, it was just, I, I don't know what he was doing. Um, yeah, he just played him through virtually, didn't he? Um, Raggy, Raggy, he's been making a couple of mistakes before that. I don't know if you noticed, Thompson. And yeah. I thought well, he would have learned. Funnily enough, I've got a mate at work who's a Man City fan, funnily enough, who's been gloating all day of his loving life. Uh, and he, he actually watched the game the other week. I said to him, watch our team when we played QPR. And that night, he said to me, who's that left back you've got? I saw Thompson, he's a good player. He said, he's not a good player. 
<laughs> and he's been joking about that ever since. And then it was on Saturday, I have to phone him and say, listen, you might be right. He's a bit of an headless chicken on Saturday. I, I like him. He's very athletic, isn't he? And he's, uh, and he's up for it. But he did seem a bit like an headless chicken yesterday mm. to me. I don't know what he was doing. I don't think he knows what he was doing. You know, he didn't mean to do it. But, well, you, uh, when you watch it back, it's 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 because I originally thought he'd tried to play it square from where from in the north and they'd been intercepted. You watch it back and you can't believe what he did. Yeah, I know. It's, I've watched it before, uh, but there's I don't know. I mean, going continuing from that, you know, you look at it and think, should Egg Potato have took him out on his way through there or what? I don't know. It'd have been sent off, but. Do we have to start going down them routes where we don't let any... It seemed, it, it's not very similar goal to Blackburn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. And, and Swansea, was Swansea similar? I'm imagining that. They broke away, didn't they? Yeah, and he squared it. Yeah. Maxwell, could he have done a bit more? Did he go to ground well, a bit early? The, the, net, the ball, didn't it? I, don't, I think it's a bit yeah. harsh to give him grief, but um, I think he might have just got his position slightly wrong coming out. Hmm. He ended, up, he, ended up sat, he ended up sat down, wasn't he? It was almost because yeah. he'd, he'd got himself off balance and then and he, 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 obviously he was showing the eyes, wasn't he? And he just went, yeah. he ended up, you know, as the ball hits the back of the net, he sat on his backside, with, you know, almost like he's sat on but the he, beach. But he is a class striker, isn't he? And he's going to put them away. Yeah. 19 yeah. times and, out of 20. And it, yeah. And it's difficult as well sometimes with keeper because you're like, do I stay or do I come out and commit myself? And you can get caught in two minds and... Like say, yeah, the only other thing I'd people. say is that whether Ekpeteta should have took him out. Now, we all might be moaning today because we might have got beat anyway and gone, but he's sent off. I've but... been down to 10 men, yeah. yeah. Don't it, you don't want to go down to 10 men in, after 20 I minutes. Don't. I think it's a little bit different yeah. it might be if it's five minutes from the end. Then I think it's a bit more of a um, a, a decision to be taken as to whether you take I'm one for the team. Is if we continue, some form of tactics are going to have to change somewhere mm. along the line. And whether it's things like that have to come into it, where we have to. We're very, means, na- we're very naive, aren't we? What I noticed yeah. from, from from all the game yesterday, all, uh, all different phases of it, they they were bringing out all the dark arts and the tricks, weren't they? And the oh. feigning of injuries and the even. Uh, and I don't want to skip skip ahead, but even when like the keeper tipped the the ball round for right shot, he's like claiming it's you know. It, it, I thought you're cheating. Yeah. You know, where, where I think we've just like hold our hand up and, and give him the corner. He's trying to claim that he hasn't touched it, and, and it was just all yeah. all game. And you know, the, the the feigning of injury, the the little tugs on. I don't, you know, Je, uh, Jez uh, Jez went out through like his his shirts halfway up, halfway up because the players yeah, been tugging him to. that much. They've been in and, out, in and out of the Premier League too much, haven't they? Not yeah, but we we, you we, could we tell. don't you do tell, any of that, you? do we? Yeah. yeah, you could tell. Yeah. Um. The worst one was when one of our players was down in the box and Tim Cruel's just like, come on, ref, he's down, the man's down, come on, blow yeah. your whistle, get get us out of this pressure. And he did. I know, I was going absolutely <laughs> ape shit at that. <laughs> yeah, and it's a Premier League ref as well, isn't it? and it reminded me of when we were in the Premier League, because you got that yeah. most weeks, didn't you? Um, yeah. You know, almost like, well, they're the better team, so I need to look after him a bit. But then yeah. again, the, the flip awful, is that... it. If we're one nil up away from home, and Gary Medine's doing it in the corner and and buying free kicks, you love it, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah we're lapping it, it up, yeah. Yeah, you lap it up when it's against you. It's but I just think as well the way the ref, like you say, Tim Cool was almost like ref, right? Come on, come on, and he's like, oh yeah, right, free okay. kick now. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was frustrating. Was that one when we had a corner? And he's he, he didn't make a decision. He was like waiting for the crowd to react or the linesman <laughs> to do something. Yeah, he was poor considering he was an elite ref. <laughs> I don't think they exist, Nick. <laughs> elite ref. That ref's under 10s. I don't know. Caught them all. Um, they've hit the post and bar, Tim, in uh, the rest of the first half. Fair to say they were on top after we'd, we'd conceded and we had that yellow card, was it for Gabriel as well? So... Th- that just it just completely changed the flow of the game. It, it, it did. I, they, they started playing probably 10 or 15 yards further up the pitch and, and that caused us a few problems. But I think we we always, I think it was a bit of a real sucker punch. You know, I think Thompson, to be fair to him, couldn't have been more apologetic, could he? Um, but I think having had a golden spell like we had, 
to then have that happen. I think it took a, took everybody a little bit of time, probably till half time, and uh, and 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 Appleton perhaps um, his half time team talk to to really you know get back on the. It's like falling off a bike, isn't it? You've got to get straight back on. And I just felt that we we perhaps were nursing our wounds um, a little bit over that goal for a little bit too long, really. And the, and to be honest, we couldn't have had any complaints if Norwich had got a second or mm. or even a third. I think the uh, the free kick was was it was extremely well hit. And um, you know, as I, like as you said, they they they'd hit hit the post as well. So you know. We got we got away with at least one of those. I think I think two 0 at half time. Maybe not reflective because the first one was a gift, but uh, we couldn't have had too many complaints if they'd got another. We did nearly grab one just before half time. Uh, Nick, you and I were were doing a Smith, getting the drinks in under the West, weren't we? So did anyone mm. actually stay behind to see that? It was a uh, Callum Callum Wright, was it? Just popped one across the box. Was that was his that head? Oh, oh, it was yeah. his header, wasn't it? He, he, he... <laughs> Um, we I was, I was stood at the top of the uh, the steps waiting to go in the lounge and uh, um, and uh, I didn't I didn't get a great view of it but he seemed to like head it uh, the key he almost had, like a free head at goal but I think it just went went wide of the left hand post um, but it was it it was a chance without without a shadow of a doubt and again it's you know you get the impression sometimes if if it'd been Norwich in that scenario they'd have scored it wouldn't they and um, it's the way it's going isn't it at the moment. Yeah, and it's just that little bit of probably that little bit of quality that and, and and having played at that elite level and it is an elite level, the Premier League, you know, it's um you 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 you're just you're just that little bit more on the ball, aren't you? And a little bit, you know, you're a bit you're less likely to hit miss. You're you're less likely to head a ball wide. You're less likely to miss a tackle. You're less likely to do a a, 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 a Thompson and. Play, play the attacking player in on 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 your own. So yeah, and I think that's where we've just you know the naivety sometimes comes into our game. I think well, what what is likely is we're going to continue to do that. So I don't. Oh yeah, we we were chatting outside afterwards, weren't we? And you were saying exactly yeah. the same thing straight after the game. What's going to change there? Because like I say, 15, 20 games down the line, could be saying the same thing. I've no doubt we'll pick up some points. We're not going to lose every game. We might get a little bit of luck, but. Just it was typical yesterday, really. Was uh, and it's not. It's been a while since I had the feeling that when we went one nil down, the most of that second half, I thought I don't even see us getting back in the game, and the most we're going to get is a draw. It's quite and different under Holloway and Critchley. We don't need that creeping in, do we? Where it's no. one one goal and we think, oh, we can't win That's this it. one. Now. Mm-hmm. I don't know suppose, whether it's a total change in tactics. That's the players he's got, the strikers. Isn't it good to... Let's try and put a bit of a positive spin on it, that we're not being battered, are we? And we're not being completely overrun and outplayed. But we're not looking like we're, go- we're, not looking like we're going to win well, games either at the moment. We haven't got a strike. We, not one of our strikers will, get, will score more than 10 goals this year. Not at all. And that, we know that now. And it, it was the same last year. Maybe it might, one might get eleven or twelve if, uh, push if they get a run in the run of games, but we'll end up, and that's where that's where we have not got a Diaz. We've not got, uh, you know, like Blackburn. Have you know somebody who can, you know, I, I, I say Blackburn because it's probably not not dissimilar scenario to us, but you know that they, they've got all, 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 you know real quality up front, and we probably over. I'm just we went quite Colby a few Bishop games with again. Josh Bowler coming. He scored. Coming he in. did. Did he? Or a Colby Bishop, Tim? Mm. <laughs> yeah. What a two, that I think. was. Oh, my God. I, I suppose the other thing is there are players to come back uh, at some point if they don't keep getting injuries on, on top of injuries, which now seems to be happening. We do seem to have some some rotten luck on that front. Um, whether we'll... I don't know. We're going about but Kevin we, Stewart. We, but... We're not going to get any better quality strikers, obviously, now, between now and January. No, nope. maybe, maybe not even in January. So, what do you think? Do they, do they just carry on with the same formation, the same players? They've got to, haven't they? Players. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, well, there's not much else we can know. do at the moment. I was having to think about it last night and thought, well, I don't know. We're, we're well, just going to go one way. We're going to keep going for over the same thing, same thing, same thing. Maybe they have to completely <laughs> change it round and say, well, that's not how we're going to be playing. 
we need to make sure we stay up here. I oh. never thought we were going to be in a relegation battle at all, but I'm no. slowly getting convinced we are. 4 4 2, it's the only way. Four, four, Big gas. I mean, yeah. Mike Bassett, get him back in. So <laughs> Results turned under Critchley when we went 4 4 fucking 2, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, well, it did, didn't it? I mean, we've got the per- we've, we've, we've got- we might have the personnel for that. Yeah, play to your strengths. And people well, can say what they want about Gary Medin, but he's going to be a key to us staying up. Yeah, it's the sort of player that you need in the like trenches. The yeah. Well, it's, you know, it is an interesting conversation, isn't it? Unless, unless we pull, pull up, pluck on a, an unsigned. Wonder striker who's you know out of contracts and not contracted anywhere, but they're not around, are they? Liam Bridcroft's not going to be the man, is he? Five how far off his? Career. How far off is um? I forget his bloody name. The guy from Beasley. Rossdale, Beasley. Beasley. Don't know. Yeah. You don't. You don't get updates. Do you? you don't no, get there's not been any updates. Stuart. On yeah, and there's Cashy as well to come back, isn't there? But oh. I think he's another one who's got picked up a second injury while he's injured, isn't he? So. It's uh, it is a worry. It's bizarrely. Yeah, mm. I think they were playing eleven aside apparently, and uh, they got it in that game. I think but it's one of the, it's one of those. It's, uh, but, but there isn't there isn't mo- there isn't much updates on. I mean, I thought Beasley was would be back in September, but he's we've, clearly... we've not really seen enough of him to know if he is the answer, though, have we? No, no. A fleeting no. performance. Uh, back to the game then. So the the players decided to honour the um, the memory of Her Majesty by having an almost mass brawl on the uh, the fifty three minutes when it was a round of applause, <laughs> and I thought that was brilliant because I don't think they knew what was going on, did they? I thought the round of applause was because of the fight or something, but none of them knew. I think they eventually twigged, didn't they? One of them was just about to pull his fist back and. Getting a few in a kerfuffle, but uh, they, they tempered it, didn't they? Yeah. The, all the, the, some of the guys behind me were all going, were singing, let him die, let him die, <laughs> let him die. And I'm thinking, <laughs> we're, try, we're trying to honor our monarchy here. And it's like, <laughs> I think it took everybody a while to realize that I think all the West weren't really in, weren't really clapping at the beginning, were they? And then I think, no, the something... North was all clapping for a good 30 seconds before. I think, it yeah, yeah. Up then and, uh... You've got I mean, a better view the of the board. Dropped, the penny drops eventually. Yeah. What was it about that fight? I can't remember. What was the? Was it something Thompson took on Bridget something? Anyone I remember? Think, I, can't, I can't remember it to be honest. I, I was actually no. focusing on the clap and, uh, and and sort of missed it all. Yeah, it didn't really have the significance that it would have had if we'd have been in the stadium. You know, three or four days after a passing. And, um, I, I felt a bit cheated at that moment that the, the FA stopped us from having that moment. It was just all a bit, uh, whatever. Yeah. We, we spoke about this in the last pod, didn't mm. we? And it, it is, it is, you know, it was short-sighted and 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 influenced by their concerns over one or two clubs who then got the opportunity to show why, you know, why they shouldn't have, um, uh, why, you know, the concerns were legitimate, weren't they, in relation to, Liverpool and your Celtics and whatever, but at the end of the day, I feel I feel cheated out of that because I think it's something that a lot of cl- lot of clubs, not just us, a lot, lot of clubs have not had that opportunity. And that's it. It was a little bit of a damp squid, wasn't it, from the yeah. point of view of it, but it's too late, really, isn't it? And yeah, moment to come. Um, James has just reminded me what it was for when yeah. Thompson they wanted Thompson to kick uh, the ball out for their injury, but they didn't kick it out when they had the ball. If you remember. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I was going mad about. Like ten seconds earlier, they're they're in possession. They're quite happy to carry on. The moment we got it, they're all ref, ref, and pointing for for the ball to go out. And it wasn't it wasn't a head injury from from memory. So you you can't have it both ways. They clearly can because they've been in the Premier League. Mm. Uh, right, second half, gents. Anything of the rest of the second half. We really didn't look like scoring, did we? Well, Jerry Medine, shot, Zed, Medine he? Zedder was good. Medine's was Zedder. decent, wasn't it? Yeah, well, he, he made a he made a slight difference, but um, no, that's what I was saying. I felt this whole second half just thought we're not scoring here. Mm. I never thought we we're going to get a goal from anywhere. 
And it's, it's terrible. I've not felt like that for a long time. When Jerry got away, you know, I, I almost yeah. wish he went for the pass for Medine, didn't he? Which was not, I think, um, you know, it was it was too far away for for Medine to get to. Um, but I do wonder whether Jerry should have gone 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 straight for goal himself, to be honest, rather than try and do that. But it's one of them. If it if it if it had just been six you know five or six yards further back, he'd, he'd have hit Medine in his full stride, wouldn't he? And, you know, we might have got a goal out of it, but uh, I think uh, I think uh, Jerry, full of confidence, would have just gone straight for goal himself. Mm. <sighs> Anything else happen of note? I can't, can't really think of much myself. Pop was that not the chance? Was it in the first half? Um, Dougal got put through, didn't he? It was just but before just... their goal. It was it was the, almost not quite as uh, as no as clear cut, was it? But... No, I just didn't have the. Pace, did he? Yeah, I mean, so obviously, your strikers always tend to have that little bit more. You know, I think if it had been, if it had been Jerry or if it had been uh, yeah. uh, Corby, we might have seen something different. I think the only other observation I would I would make um, that that I, I'm I'm not sure it's the right thing yet, but with with, with uh, Appleton's clearly played Patino as as the, as the as the anchor of the three midfield, and I wonder whether he's. He's very, I mean, I thought he had a great game, but I wonder whether he'd be better for a little bit further forward for us. So you had du- you sort of had Dougal and Wright as the the forward playing players of the three, and I think we know that's not Dougal's strength by any stretch of the imagination. He's he's better he's better being the one that sits deep, but um, clearly Appleton sees Patino or someone to pick it up and. And, and make things happen from a relatively deep position. But I, I think if you're doing that, I don't, unless I'm, I'm his biggest fan, but I'm not sure I'd play Dougal if, if that's going to be the, um, if that's going to be the way the triangle is going to work. Mm-hmm. Tim, that guy who sits behind you, I've told you about the guy that keeps digging out Dougal throughout the match. Mm. Uh, Patino lost the ball and gave the ball away. And he was he started slating Dougal. He's, a, he's an elderly gentleman. I was like, it just assumed him. it was Dougal. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. You could say it was any any excuse to have a dig at Dougal. So I turned around to him and said, "You do know that was uh, Pervader, don't you?" And he goes, "Oh yeah, well that, that yeah, well Patino, sorry." And he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, but he's been rubbish as well, hasn't he?" I was like, "Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a free kick, wasn't there? From from right, um, yeah, Raggy almost too near to the edge of the box to. Trouble the keeper right down the middle and right on the edge of the box. I'm struggling to even remember it. To be I mean, honest, it kind of just passed it low. This is the one yeah. where they're playing. You know, we just see the Premier League, don't you, where the defender mm. the defender lies down so they can yeah. behind behind the wall. That that was it. Was that one? Yeah. I, he's, memory he's, block on memory block on the end of whatever happened there. Yeah. It was that <laughs> memorable. It's just... He just dragged it. That was the one I was on about before, where the keeper oh, actually got right. fingertips to it, and then yeah. and then tried to make out he hadn't touched it. Which you know, I thought you. Anyway, to be fair, we got we got the we got the corner out of it. But I think the line the linesman spotted it. Um, but yeah, it was. I think it was always going wide, even if he not got his fingertips to it. To, to be honest, and like you say, John, I think it was probably it was right on the edge of the area, wasn't it? It was probably a little bit too close. Mm-hmm. So at uh, the end of the game, obviously we lost one nil. Uh, Nick, as you mentioned earlier in the show, Dom Thompson going around holding his hands up like that, apologising pretty much to, to every stand. So he obviously knew he'd uh, made a bit of a cock yeah. up. Yeah, Do you well, like to see that it. sort of thing? It's a bit like Sean when he says the, the Twitter apologies. I don't think there's any need, really. It just happens sometimes in football, doesn't it? It does, but I just think he was, he was that gutted and, you know, you, you can't give... Somebody like Pookie, you know, a chance like that. Um, so yeah, I think he was just he was just that that gutted that and that mistake cost us the game, didn't it? It was one nil. So um, yeah, he was just uh, you know apologising. Mm-hmm. But I think other than that, he, he just I think he's good going forward. You know, he really likes to bomb forward. It's kind of this modern day fullback thing, isn't it? But we were saying afterwards. I think first and foremost. You want your defenders to be able to defend, you know, and then and then anything else is a bonus. And that side of it is, uh, I think, where it 
it lets us down a bit. Um, but there's no husband's got a knock, hasn't he? So he's uh, he's not going to be uh, not going <laughs> to be dropped. And I suppose he, he's got a chance on Tuesday night to to put it right, hasn't he? He has. Um, okay, let's before we move on to player ratings. There was a, a couple of comments that will just generate a bit of a conversation. The first one from Harry Wake. Can the four of you, hand on heart, be happy with the performances week in, week out? There's nothing to get you off your seats and nothing there. Raggy first. What do you think? Well, I, it gets me off my seat because I stand up all game anyway. So, <laughs> But yeah, I'd stay sat down if I did sit down. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not happy with the uh, performances, but I'm struggling to get annoyed at any anybody about it. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't blame Appleton. I don't blame the players. Uh, there's no oyster there. There's no oyster. There's no to oyster blame. to even have a go at well, now, is there? We'll blame. We'll blame him anyway. He's getting the blame. <laughs> he set all this off. Uh, we've got a lack of quality up front, and it's eventually going to run right through the side where they just think, oh. Confidence is going to go. But, you know, I've defended the strikers, Lavery, Yates, Medine. I've always defended them and said they don't get enough. They don't get provided with enough chances. But I start to think, well, they, they can't create their own chances either. So if one of our strikers had got away like that, Puki, I don't know whether we would have scored or not. No, you're right. It wouldn't have been like that. And I don't know why we haven't signed this quality. Tim. Tim Reggie's mentioned no one to blame. You can there's no one to blame, but the thing to blame is the transfer policy. And what, 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 down. what struggles what I struggle with, they've got this they've got this whole, you know, we, we had we had the um uh, the, the period with Crit obviously with Critchley's bombshell and that and that created um and I think I think I said it at the time because when I joined when I was on holiday and I said, you know, it's the worst possible time because this is when you're looking at signing your players and it, and it created a, um, a vacuum for probably three or four weeks when we should have been doing stuff. But the flip side of it is we're, we're supposedly meant to have a recruitment team. Um, and, and so that should mitigate against that actually happening, but it didn't. And, and I, I'm left wondering, you know, you know, we've, we've, we've had players, you know, who have come to sign for us and then don't sign for us. You know, um, I don't know with Bishop whether we thought we could get Ellis Sims and therefore basically binned him off, but then didn't get Ellis Sims and we ended up with nobody. But we we needed to freshen up up front. We we all knew that. I, to be fair, I think the, the recruitment people knew that, but they didn't deliver on anything. And if, if you don't deliver, you're left with what we've got. And, and the problem is, as I said before, we've got strikers who won't score one ten goals this year. And that that's going to make the task of staying in this division all that much harder. Um, the first year we had the momentum from coming up and that carries you, you know, we're seeing it with Rotherham at the moment, aren't we? It carries you a, a, a little bit and, 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 and probably the confidence gets you a couple of points that you might not otherwise expect. But second year, you need to freshen it up and we haven't done. And, uh, and it is going to bite, I think it's going to bite us in the, uh, the proverbial backside. Mm. Uh, Nick, a, a similar question from Michael Hyde. Evening, chaps. Lack of investment is going to kick us in the bollocks this season. What are your thoughts, troops? Well, yeah, like Tim, Tim says, quite possibly because we've not got prolific strikers. And I think last, like you say, last season, there's that kind of bounce, isn't there, um, from from the promotion and and even in the crowd as well. If we went one nil down last season, the North would just get louder. Whereas with this season. It's just it's a bit flat, isn't it? You know, we'll kind of go a bit quiet, and because th- everyone's thinking, oh, we've had a good fifteen minutes and we've conceded. Here we go again. Um, I'm not, you know, too doom and gloom about it because there's a lot of games to go and a lot of points to play for, and there are positives, um, and we have got players to come back. So even when they do, hopefully we will, um, you know, perhaps start to pick up a few more points but really for us this season it's about just staying up so we're not you know we're not five points adrift at the bottom or anything so there's 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 a lot of points to play for and I still think we'll be okay um if we can perhaps get perhaps get a striker in in January 
You know, there's a lack of motivation around the whole football club. Fans, the club, everything just seems... It's a bit flat. flat yeah. yeah, it's flatter, I, isn't it? It's not... not uh, but I think it starts with this. We, we just want to stay up, consolidate. I hate that word. It's just like, let's consolidate. Well, let's just not bother for a season then because why can't we just say, let's win the league and uh, let's get everyone behind it and that small mentality of Blackpool Football Club still exists with a lot of people, I think. And um, the, the one bit we've got that we know, we've got a great fan base and a, we can back that team and back that club to push it far beyond where it uh, where it probably should be. I'm not sure the same thing's coming back and forward from the club, the players, I don't know. From Appleton onwards, no one, everyone just looks flat. And... I don't know whether a relegation battle is what that team is going to be capable of it, in its it, current form. It's a fair point. You don't want to... If, if your goal for the season is to not get relegated, it's like, well, why should I bother going? I can't stand it. I cannot stand it. It's the best club in the world. Look what we've done at this club. And I was I was harping on about this last night. And I harp on about it all the time. The best fans in the world. We wanted rid of owners. We did it by whatever means necessary. Other clubs are trying it all over the place. You can't do it. We, it's a unique town with a unique fan base and we need to just, we need to use it all and it should be sold and the players should come here and say, listen, you, you're lucky to be on the Gold Coast level. This is the best town in the world. It should be sold. And having Blackpool fans own the club and on the board, it should be even more. I'd make them all sit down and watch every tape of every protest that we at this club and sell it to them and say, look what these lot went for and went through. So, in the dying moments of games, and I'm not saying they don't try, they do, but it just might give them something. And we need, we're going to need all these little bits of something for them to get behind or to pull out the bag later on in this season when we're going to need it. And I'm not sure we use it. Um, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think we use it at all, Raggy. Um, no. You know, and, and, and to be fair, you know, si Simon, when he came in, you know, Wanted a, I wanted a clean slate, and he didn't. He didn't want the oyster name mentioning, and etc. Uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And I couldn't fully understand that, but it is. It is part of our DNA, isn't it? And, um, and, and I don't, I don't know whether the players quite is. understand. Some of the, I don't, I don't think they've got a clue. If we walked in that change room, I don't think many of them would have a clue. And I think it should be part of their induction to the football club. Of this is why this the history of this club is. So unique. And if you went to bigger clubs around this country, around the world, they'll go in and they said, this is how Liverpool Football Club is. This is the history of Liverpool Football Club. And they will know why it's so important to Liverpool fans. And Manchester United players will know why it's so important. And Real Madrid and Blackpool. But we're one of the only Ballon d'Or winners, for God's sake. We're one of the biggest clubs in the world. We should be <laughs> acting like it. Uh, Greg Douglas, great point made by Raggy. I think that's something Critch fully got and understood. Yeah, he seems to... Critch did seem to get that a bit more than the previous. Well, uh, he, did, he did, but I must admit, I did have, I did speak to Critchley once and he didn't know a right lot about the protests or what went on at this club. So it was... I think he got... Right. I think he got it... He got it from a certain point of... He knew what Klopp had done at Liverpool and saw uh, a blueprint and thought, I'll go with that. And it, and it did work. But um, I'm not sure he got the full history of what this football. You'd, th you'd, you'd think actually, you bear in mind, bear in mind, you know, you got you got a manager coming in, and and you think that actually they'd want to know, wouldn't you? And they would want yeah. to. Perhaps we look at it from a different perspective, don't we? Because this is our this is our club, and we're here forever. Where they're not, are they? None of them. It's, it's whether it's manager, player, point. or whatever. It's a unique selling point of our club. And I tell you, you'll know when you tell other people, when you spoke to other people from around the country or different fans, and you tell them and you start to get on the story and you've got 20 minutes with them. And they're like, well, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I was like, we had two Norwich fans in the club late last night and I was showing them, they were from Northern Ireland. And I was showing them and talking to them and showing them, it's like, unbelievable. And so it's unique to our club. You know, we've got Manchester United one of their owners. That's the biggest club in the world. They can't do it. We did it. Use it. it is. It's an un, it's an unbelievable story, and to find out more about the uniqueness of Raggy's unbelievable story, uh, Raggy is appearing at the uh, Seasiders podcast 
live show at the Winter Gardens this Saturday, come and seals at 8 p.m. Um, we've got GTF live doing a QA. and a We're going to do a match reaction and we're going to be having... Raggy's going to be giving his tale uh, and Jazz Smith as well. Uh, very entertaining characters, the both of them. So it'll be uh, essential viewing on a on an 8 p.m. on a Saturday. Better than Strictly Come Dancing or that. And there's free you know. vodka and Red Bull in the green room before, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> It'll be, well, like, it'll be like Oliver Reed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fell over then. <laughs> He's been on it already. So yeah, uh, it's on the it's on that banner there. If anyone wants to come, you can pay on the door. Um, it's probably a better way to do it. Actually, it's twelve quid. Uh, you don't get those stupid fees if you buy it online. So yeah, it was uh, as uh, Mitch has just said. That is a partridge level of link, John. Yes, <laughs> I've learnt from the best. Right, let's move on to the um, player ratings section. The much vaunted player ratings section, Tim, that's been dragged it's kicking been in. much missed, hasn't it? Yeah, it much mixed. It. It's backed by popular demand, so I'll let you go first. Uh, Raggy, Chris Maxwell, your, your mark out of 10. Oh, seven. 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 Pretty, pretty good. I like him. He's solid. He doesn't... Uh... He's good. Player, Never lets you I, down, does he? I th yeah, I think he'll always be a seven and above on certain occasions. No, Tim, Jordan, won't. Gabriel, booked early and that, that kind of tempered his uh, I, I, we forays we've not and mentioned, tackles. We've it. not mentioned it, but I thought both full-backs were <laughs> at, at the poorest games I've seen them have this season. And uh, Jordan, bless him. Um, maybe that maybe that um, yellow card did have an impact on him, but we didn't see any, any of the um, overlapping and forward play well, we don't say didn't see any, but we didn't see anything like the amount we would normally see, and um, it was a very subdued performance. So it's a, a six minus for me. Nick, big Marv, um, noticeably better without the burden of the captain's armband. I thought. Yeah, I thought he did well. Um, I'm going to go seven plus. Um, he made a, a very good goal line clearance, didn't he? As well, that that prevented a. A certain oh, yeah. goal. That's right, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think not being captain will will only uh, benefit him. Um so yeah, seven plus. Jordan Thornley, Raggy. Yeah, well, I like him. I like him and uh, I don't know why he's had such a rough do since he's been at this football club. I've no idea. He seems like a, a model professional really, doesn't he? Just comes in, does the good job, throw him back out, throw him back in. Uh I a seven again, I think. Yeah, I think he's he's pretty good and solid. I think, barring the one incident, I don't think the defence was that bad at all. Oh yeah, they kept a, a high scoring team down to one goal. Didn't overrun us. Um, oh Tim, you've got you've got the uh, the, the the quotes best one, uh, Dom Thompson. Yeah, and listen, I, I've been a great fan of uh, Dom. I think he's you know um, I hate I, I, the comment that. Raggy was told it was interesting, but you know he, he's, he's lively. Um, I, I've liked him. I do. I don't think he he does enough. I don't think he's as good as. Ironically, I don't think he's good as husband in that in the opposition's last third. I think husband gets better crosses in. I think we saw that on um, yesterday. I don't want to be too hard on him. Too. Hard. He it, did make a lot of mistakes though, Tim. In yeah. The, previous to the. the I think. I think, I think it's got to be a four. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Nick, you've got uh, Charlie Patino. I've even got a banner for him. Um, yeah, wasn't his wasn't his uh, his most effective game. I thought he got caught in possession a couple of times, which you know he's got to remember. Sometimes you, you you're not in a an under twenty threes you know kick about where you get probably a lot of time on the ball. Um, I, I'm going to go six. Kenny Dougal, Raggy. Oh, Kenny Dougal. He uh, gets mixed reviews around that ground these days. I like Kenny Dougal. I think he does a lot of good. But it seems like it's getting... It reminds me a little bit of Gary Taylor Fletcher years back when some people didn't like him. And he proved it wrong in the end. I think... Uh, well, I thought he played well. But, I did. I, mean, I thought he had a good game. People will listen when I say this and go, no, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. But I think he's around the seven as well. I thought he did. I, thought he did I think a lot well. of people don't understand his role. I think that's yeah. the... 
But it, but it needs to be at the bottom of the three, not. He was pushed yeah, yeah, too sure. far off. Yeah. Could, we'll get yeah. more out of Patino further forward because he's got yeah. he's got that the wrong something way around. extra. They are the wrong way around for me. And I can see what Appleton's trying to do because, you know, in, in another team where you've got better players around you, Patino might be the, the one who picks the ball up and turns and goes. But we, we need Patino on the edge of edge of their box trying to do his stuff. He put the cross in for, to be fair, he put the cross in for, for Medine's head. You know, he's got that quality up. Look there, which Dougal, to be fair, hasn't got. But Dougal is the one who will just break play up and pass it to Patino and pass it to right. I, yeah. I, I generally think that we got that the wrong way around. Yeah. Uh, Callum Wright, as you've just mentioned, Tim, up, up there for man of the match, really. Uh, he's my man busy. of the match. Is he? he is my man of the match, without a shadow of a doubt. I think, uh, I think for his debut, uh, he looked comfortable on the ball. Um, he... he Drove at opposition. He probably was involved in two or three of our best chances. With obviously he had the free kick slightly wide, but obviously he was a bit unlucky because and, and uh, he got I got reminded in the chat actually he'd had a, a shot that had been saved before he did the header that just went wide. So he was a bit unlucky there. I thought his his uh, link up play with Pavida was superb. Um, eight plus. Just quickly, is that everyone's man of the match before we? Yeah, he's mine. Agree with Echo yeah. what Tim said. Yeah. yeah. Um, Theo Corbinu, Nick, um, Mitch in his uh, match review described him as, or his performance, as uh, uh, an out-of-control supermarket trolley where, trolley where one of the wheels is knackered and it can <laughs> just go anywhere and you don't know where it's going to go. I thought that was a perfect Quite summary. an out description. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, that's very good. That's better than any number. How do I put that into a number? Yeah, uh, out of control shopping trolley with wonky wheel. Is that? I'll go. I'll go six plus. I've got there's a bloody fruit fruit fly. I've even got a Corbin. It, it, interestingly, those two Norwich fans last night said that Corbin was our best player. He was, he was good, player. wasn't he? he? I thought he had a good game. He was trying to make things happen. And he's he's, he's probably that. Is the one if you're going through if you're going to have that one on one that we spoke about, he yeah. is the player I would want to be in the one on one more than Jerry, more than Medine, more than anybody else. Lavery, I think he's calm, the one most he? likely to score. Hmm. Again, though, he's not our player, is he? No. Jerry hates Yaggy, uh, Raggy. Sorry, Aggie. Aggie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's your that's your cousin from West Yorkshire. Yeah, Jerry hates. <laughs> Uh, I mean, he just try, he tries. He, never, he cut a forlorn figure at times, didn't he? He's kind of out of temper trying, isn't he? Every time. Mm. But I don't know, effectiveness on the game. I don't know. Six. Yeah. I think. That's fair. Finally, Tim. Jan Perveda. Jan, not Ian. Not Ian. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've got to say, I thought particularly the first half, he was he was uh, very, very lively. And um, he was involved in most of the good stuff that we did. Um, so um, I, uh, I, I, I think he's just got to work on the end product, hasn't he? And uh, I think, we, you know, if it comes, then he, he could be a, a, a real player for us. Uh, I'm going seven plus. I think he's. It was. It was. A, it was a positive performance. Yeah. Uh, John Gradwell's just put in the chat. Anyone else annoyed by that monstrous dreary song the Norwich fans were singing? They never stopped. Yes, I remember that, John. And I also still singing it, singing at the end, weren't they? That hit as well. What the f was that? It was. Jim said it looked like fuchsia. It was a, it was a white top, it, and then someone put it in the wash with like a, blue pair of jeans. A, or you know, a red hanky in there or something. <laughs> it, it was bizarre, <laughs> wasn't it? I think Delia probably chose it, didn't she? When she'd been yeah. on the cooking sherry. <laughs> Again, I think Mitch, Mitch's uh, report was quite funny. He, he said it was like something you'd buy in the early 90s from Top Man. Colour. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit tie-dye, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember those thermo colour t shirts? I was just going to say thermo. What were they called? Thermo global hyper colour. That's you'd, it. You sweat it changed, and it colour, changed your, colour. Your body heat, wasn't it? Yeah. It sounded like you had one. I think I probably did. 
Everyone did at nineties raves, didn't they? Yeah. Right, before we go, let's let's catch up with a bit of, of news. Uh Raggy, you can address this first one. Uh the the Jimmy Armfield mural, which now looks like Jimmy Armfield. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Well, you know, that's been a saga, hasn't it? And uh, it's every credit to Iggy because he's 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 took he's took a fair bit of stick, but he stuck with it and got it sorted. Uh, it was a different artist that came in just to finish off the face. I mean, the initial, the original one did a did a good job to a point, and then it was just it became evident he just couldn't get it to look lifelike. Um, and then this new fella's coming to do it, and I, on, after the first day, I thought he'd finished, and I'm. I'm looking at it thinking, that looks even worse. <laughs> but he hasn't, he hasn't finished. So when we came back next day, he was pleasant, pleasantly surprised. And uh, it was good to see um, Jimmy's son. And I always forget if it's John or Duncan. That came into the club. Well, one of them came in. I forget which is which. He came into the club yesterday and he's like, you know, now my dad's on the side of the building. Yeah. And I thought, that perfect. That's he stayed quiet during all of the initial thing, which spoke volume. Because he's not said a word, because they're polite, aren't they? And uh, he, he popped in just to say that yesterday, and I thought that was uh, such a class. That confirmed it was good. That yeah, I it think... looks great. It's, it, it's literally it's chalk and cheese with what it's like before, yeah. and so. It, it, but the rest of it now looks a lot better, doesn't it? You know, it's and it's all, yeah. it's all about the face and the eyes, yeah. and 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 getting that getting expressed because he is squinted in the picture, isn't he? Anyway, so yeah. and he. Uh, and I just, I just, it just, I couldn't believe how much better it looked. Yeah, I'm, a, the- I'm exactly the same. I was like, wow, it's like that is Jimmy Armfield, even from a distance. What, what's the artist's name? Do you want to give him some credit? He's done you know a brilliant. What? He's an absolutely brilliant job. He's done a brilliant job, and I can't remember his name. So. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Ig- Iggy was dealing with it. I can't remember the guy's name, <laughs> but it, 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 fantastic, whoever he is. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's quality. It's it's such a good tribute to him now. And like as one of his sons said, that is my dad now. So yeah, yeah. well done, Iggy, and well done whoever the artist was. Um, Liam Brudcut, um signed a one year, one year plus one deal. Um, I've been doing a bit of digging into him. Um, a CDM, another CDM, and he scored four goals in his entire career. So where is he going to fit into this team? And we've got Connolly and Dougal already. You do wonder, and 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 he's also quite injury prone as well, isn't he? From what I, uh, yeah. I think he's had, he's had some inju- he's had some um, injury issues himself. You, yeah, you do you do wonder, don't you? Particularly if, if whether they're not expecting Stewart ever to come back, I don't know. But um, you know, if you think about potentially having Stewart available as well, um, and, and and we know where the where the the issues lie elsewhere, don't they? In reality. Our midfield has never been. I think part, probably apart from when we had this bit of a disaster with the five at the back and having to play Dougal and Connolly in midfield, that didn't work, and, we, and our midfield got overrun. But um, when we've played the four three three, I've never felt our midfield got absolutely hammered, and I, I, I'm, I'm more interested in the top end and what we can do up there. Well, we'll see. Anyone else got an opinion on Bridcott? I think a couple of seasons ago he he was decent, um, but it's I suppose what what he's like now. Um, We'll see, we'll see if he's a an upgrade on what we've got or or not. Um, There's there's, you know plenty of games coming up, so maybe we'll get his chance. Next up, P and E moved to twelve thirty thanks to the local constabulary. Raggy, it's got nil nil written all over it. Well, it's got it has got nil nil written all over it, and it's kind of going to ruin the day as well, isn't it? It's going to lose you a bit of revenue as well, I guess. At the oh yeah, oh, yeah. Listen, I, I'm sick of the bleeding police, but uh, the uh, they, they struggle to police football matches, don't they? For some reason, twelve thirty to three o'clock. I don't know what what the what, what people will drink less. So, you know, it's I don't know, bizarre. It just takes away from the atmosphere of the game. Always has done when they move them kick off. So as as I don't it's... agree with it. I don't, I don't know why they have to go with both games straight off the bat. And I don't know why they can't just police things uh, in a normal manner. I understand the problems they've got, but 
a long time now. <laughs> a whole nother season of dealing with that ground and the way it is structured and everything, and it should be sorted out. And for the want of putting a few turnstiles down the east side of that ground, could have them knocked up overnight. I don't know why it's taking so long. Well, the last game was at three o'clock, and they didn't exactly cover themselves in glory no. post match in that one, no. did they? <laughs> no, and I've no, I've no time for them because they, they, and they push it off onto everybody else. Listen, we have to close that balcony sometimes at the Armfield Club. The other week, we had to close it because there was trouble in the town centre on Central Drive near the Castle Pub. Oh, no, you can't <laughs> open it yet. There's trouble in on Central Drive. So what, what's that got to do with anything? It's just bizarre. It's weird, weird it, rules. And... It, annoy, it annoys me, the plastic glasses rule. I think, uh, is, I it only, is it only your, your bar? That gets hit by I that mean, rule. There's nothing we can do about it. It was already on the license when we got the premises, so we we, we did ask to change it. They did. They would allow us to change it if we get and, and use glass. If we gave up complete use of that balcony, <laughs> so we couldn't agree to that, could we? So you could have got. Could the, you, yeah, could you've you got some sort of little. Uh, uh, you can, you can in there uh, to, to get around uh, it or something. Just like, just to just to balance, you can sort of understand why there's that issue over the because there's, there's no other hostelry probably other than the work at uh, the Bloomfield club down the road you don't get the away fans coming past in the same way that you do outside yours do you so and the, the risk no, of glass that, being but, thrown well that well that can be that can be managed like it's managed at every other football ground in the country when mm. um when we go there to, to their pub uh, I often they, they always bring the away police officer around the club before the game, and I always ask them the same question, particularly after the game. Would you do that? Would you police it like that at your place? And the overwhelming answer is always no. Don't know what the problem is. Well, it's so, it's the, the the it's down to the police that we've got this twelve thirty, isn't it? Yeah. Because the the yeah. statement says, following a meeting between both clubs and Lancashire Police, it has been agreed that the away allocation. Blah blah blah, and the the they so they they the police have dictated. I'm just going um, to the away the away allocation, yeah, and the fact it's a twelve thirty, which it, it, it annoys me. It's like they're just ruining our day, our big day. Well, they don't yeah, know what they, 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 they? they can't think for themselves, and they just come up with the uh, load of nonsense. You want to hear all the stuff they give us about holding the higher ground on that balcony? Then it's not a battle, you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We've got a bit of feedback, man. Yeah, it's well. There you go. There's, there's also the tickets issue as well, isn't there? That they're they're dictating we can only have a certain amount of their fans in the ground. It's an effect in us, isn't it? So we're we're going to get the same. Well, yeah. Well, I don't like all that. That's become tit for tat, obviously. And that all that happens is the same that's happened at Rangers and Celtic for years. You've seen it. They used to get 8,000 each or something. Now they're getting about 500 each. And that's mm. the way this will go with all this. Yeah. Uh, well, it's the way it's gone. And we're both giving the minimum. Oh, yeah. It's only the fans that lose. And if that's just because of a bit of a spat at boardroom level, I don't know. But if it is, it shouldn't happen. The way Same we design much. that. And not that I want any more Preston fans in our ground. But if it was the sake of giving them a few extra seats for the fact that we'd get 5,500, Mm. You've you've gone a bit robotic, Ro- Maggie. Have you plugged oh, something I'm different in? <laughs> uh, Nick, Tim, anything to add about the Preston tickets? Well, should, time and allocation. It started. It started with us, didn't it? It started with us not giving, not giving them, and we lost out uh, the last game. We went away big style, and it's carrying on. You know, and there is an argument. Yes, we can fill it with Blackpool fans, but. Um, the reality is we don't use that east, that, that that north part of the east, any other game of the season. And we've let plenty of other teams have more, you know, uh, Derby, uh, Blackburn, um, I can't remember, there's uh, plenty of oh, others. I'm sure when Sunderland play. come a little bit, they'll have the whole the whole end. So it's, the reality is we, we probably as a club need to say, uh, we're going to give you more tickets next time, guys, but let's, let's cut this nonsense out because... Like Raggy says, the only people losing out of fans, and mainly it's us, because we're the ones. Every, you know, every other team goes to goes to Preston and gets the full alley if they need it. The five thousand allocation. It's the one game they don't do it, and they don't sell out the ground anyway. So 
we caused, we've caught, for me, we've started it and we need to now be the bigger club and stop it. But yeah, it, see, it, see, it seems like they're just cowing down to what the police tell them and they can take the advice. They don't have the, to the follow it, the, though, poli- the police haven't... No, th- listen, the, there's no way the police have, have, have said you can't... I, I'm not having it. If, if, if you went to Burnley, we're, not, we're about six inches apart, yeah. weren't we? Um, at the end of the day, if we wanted to give Preston another one of the blocks, still leave a gap between that and the north, because it is a Category A game, isn't it? If we wanted to do that, we could do it, I'm sure. Because at the end of the day, the ultimate decision is with our ground safety officer, I would think. I, I don't think the police have the power to say, you're not doing that. They might not want you to do it because they want an easy they want an easy ride on, this, on, on, on the Saturday or the Tuesday or whatever day the game is. But the reality is, the perception's been that we've decided that we, we're going to limit their allocation. And listen, they're not stupid. They see all our other games where, where other away fans are getting more. And, and, and it started a tit for tat. And, mm. and, and we, we are, for, you know, how good was that, that, we were that year when we went and we had 5,000 filling the away end? It's fantastic. And, both those, and it both was, those games, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's poor. And it's, it's, to be honest, I, I get to a point where you, you almost it's that crap. You wonder you, we don't really can be bothered going, and you sh- and it should be the one game you really, really want to go to, and it should be the best. It should be three o'clock, and it, and you know, get your policing sorted right, and do your job, and um, and and they seemingly can't or won't or don't want to, and then everything gets changed, and we're all compromised as a result. I was I was like you, Tim. I'm like thinking of. It's just taken all the shine off the game now. And it's, uh, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. But let's hope things change. Right, just before we go, everybody, I'm just going to bring this up on the screen again. Shameless plug, Seaside's podcast live, Saturday the 8th of October, 8 o'clock at the uh, Winter Gardens. Tickets £12.50 on the door, or you can buy them on that link that you can just about see there. If you go to the Winter Gardens box office you'll be able to buy tickets that's gonna be a great evening anyway so i really hope we see everyone there right and, and on that note i think we'll we'll call it an evening nick's starting to to flag after his uh 10 pints yesterday so i'll let him go <laughs> go and have his horlex Maggie, <laughs> you've got what well, looks like you've got a balloon behind you there what's that oh it's yeah six year old my, my lad's birthday the other day all oh, right happy oh, birthday oh. young raggy what's his name marco Marco oh. Ragazzino from South That's Shore. Like a striker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, our new striker. Right, yeah. Thanks for right, everybody. Thanks for coming on, guys. Um, what I most said is thanks for watching. Thanks for downloading up the pool and do come to Seaside's podcast live up the pool. Up the pool. Up the pool. Up the pool. <laughs> Tradition.